Hello, biology students. Um, this lesson is an introduction to the process of photosynthesis, and we'll get into a little bit more detail later um, into this unit, but this is just our first day talking about photosynthesis and what it is. Um, so the essential questions I want you to focus on as we go through this um, you should be able to explain how plants convert sunlight into food and all the processes that go along with that eventually, and then identify the reactants and products in photosynthesis. So to begin with, I think we need to talk a little bit about energy um, and how energy moves through systems and kind of that big picture of how photosynthesis impacts things in our world. And so energy, if you remember back from physical science class, you probably talked a lot about the different types of energy. Um, we're just going to talk a little bit about um, kinetic energy. Remember, is that energy of motion. Potential energy is that stored energy. And you probably saw diagrams like this, where you have this big hill, right? And there's a boulder on top of this hill. Um, and maybe you're standing there behind the boulder. And we say that this boulder has a lot of energy of position, um, which is actually potential energy. It's stored energy. Just due to, we know there's gravity, right? And so as when we have this boulder at the top of the hill here, um, it has a lot of um, potential energy or gravitational energy that is stored just because of its position. If we, if you give this a big push, you apply some force, you cause this boulder to begin rolling down this hill and it's falling and falling and falling, this potential energy is converted to kinetic energy or energy of motion. So we get that transformation of energy from one form to another. And that's a really important concept in biology and all things in our universe. The fact that energy cannot be created nor destroyed, it is simply um, converted from one form to another. Maybe you talked a little bit about there's some you know, friction with the air, and so we actually get some energy given off as heat and so forth. Um, but we never lose or gain energy. Um, it's just converted from one form to another. And I think that's a really important concept. So again, we say the energy is converted from one, one form to another. And in this handy dandy little diagram, we talked about potential energy, stored energy, being converted to um, kinetic energy. Um, we said a little bit as lost as heat and so forth. So photosynthesis is all about capturing energy and converting it from one form to another. And that's what we're going to concentrate on as we move through this unit. So photosynthesis, all about harvesting that energy, the need for energy. Um, all living things on this planet need energy. Uh, we talked about that um, when we talked about how do we determine whether things are living or non-living, and we said one of the ways is that they they use energy. They need to take in some sort of energy. So photosynthesis is kind of the root of all of that on this planet. Photosynthesis is that process by which radiant energy from the sun is converted into chemical energy stored in the bonds of organic compounds, usually carbohydrates. Um, and typically a molecule called glucose. So plants capture that energy, convert it to some glucose. And it's a pretty magical process. Notice I said plants. Only plants can do this. Um, you know, it doesn't matter how long you or I stand outside and put our, <laughs> put our arms out or put our hands up to the sunshine, we are never going to be photosynthetic. This is something that only plants can do. We already talked about plant organelles and that special organelle where that happens, and we're going to talk about that a little, in a little more detail um, in just a little bit. But photosynthesis 
really does um, take in some carbon dioxide, some water, light energy in the form of sunlight, and then what is produced is glucose and some oxygen. So we say here, this side right here, powder, this side right here, these are the reactants. So these are the things that are being taken in by plants. They're going to go through a, a chemical reaction. So we say this is biochemistry because it's chemistry that's happening in living things, and bio means living. So this is biochemical reaction. These are the reactants, and this side then, this glucose are, and oxygen are the products. Everything is separated. The two sides are separated by this little reaction arrow. So we say everything to the left of the arrow are always the reactants in a chemical reaction. Everything to the right are the products in a chemical reaction. You'll notice I have respiration on here. Um, we're going to talk about that later in this unit. First we talk about photosynthesis, then we talk about respiration. But I just want to point out that reaction really quickly uh, because you'll notice, so if you look at the reactants here, look for a moment. What do you notice about if I look at, so remember where we have the um, reactants to the left of the arrow, the products to the right of the arrow. What do you notice? Pause for a moment, pause the video for a moment and, and write down, jot down a couple things you notice about how these two equations, the photosynthesis equation and the respiration equation, how are they similar and how are they different? All right, hopefully you paused and you jotted down a couple of things. It is interesting, if we look at these two, respiration, which is actually the breaking down of molecules to provide energy for living things, the products are very much like the reactants in photosynthesis. It's almost the opposite. So maybe you talked about this in seventh grade life science. I bet you did. So he, these are the reactants, right, in that respiration process. I just want you to notice that it's like these equations are flipped. The only thing that's different is the energy in respiration is is not light energy it's a different kind of energy it's actually energy in the form of ATP but it's pretty interesting that this whole like plants make this and then plants and animals both um, break down in this uh, cellular respiration process the very products that were made in photosynthesis it's how the world works it's how we harvest energy from the Sun and then transfer it to other or to living organisms uh, to be used as energy. So it's really important to make those connections. So how does this process work? Um, so really quickly, this is just a little chart that's kind of an overview of this photosynthesis process. So we have obviously the sun. The sun really is the ultimate source of energy for almost everything on our planet. There's a few exceptions to that, but for the most part, this is the ultimate source of energy on our planet. So we're going to talk about kind of the structure of this chlorophyll. Remember, hopefully you remember how we talked about the differences between plant cells and animal cells. And one of the differences was that plants have these things called chloroplasts. We don't have these, um, but plants do. Um, and the, the chlorophyll is the green substance that's in these chloroplasts, and this is where that energy gets harvested. Uh, plant, so, so in this, this is actually a plant leaf right here. Um, we have to take in some water from the roots, sunlight, some carbon dioxide, 
from the air, and we're going to talk about these stomata. Uh, and then that that whole this whole biochemical process occurs, and then we get some oxygen given off, and then we get some. This is that carbohydrate or glucose that we talked about that's going to be made. And some of this, a lot of times, is converted to starch for storage. Um, so that's why sometimes when we eat plants, we say some plants are really starchy, like potatoes, um, carrots have some starch. Um, root vegetables tend to have uh, be more starchy because that actually is where that, that glucose is converted to a starch for storage. So let's talk for a little bit about that process of how stuff gets into the plant and how stuff leaves the plant because that's pretty important. So we have the carbon dioxide has to enter into the leaf and oxygen has to leave the leaf. Somehow some water gets in there. Well, we know that water actually enters in through the roots and there's tissues in here. We'll talk about that a little um, in more detail later, but there's, there's um, xylem tissue that actually carries the water up around the plant. And then um, the other really cool thing here, I'm drawing this in green, there's these little pores. I'm drawing these much larger than they are. We're going to look at these under a microscope, but there are these pores called stomata. Okay, so there's pores in the leaf that allow gas exchange, meaning that they allow uh, that carbon dioxide to enter the leaf this way. They allow oxygen to leave the leaf this way. Um, so my CO2 is going in through these pores. My oxygen is exiting through these pores. And the actual structure of these pores, if I draw this really large, actually, let me pick, I think they should be green. There's a couple of cells called guard cells. So here's a guard cell, here's a guard cell. And these actually control the opening and closing of those stomata so that gas exchange can occur. And, and there's some cool functions with, with the guard cells um, that certain things that cause them to open and certain things that cause them to close. So they don't just stay open all the time. It's a very specific function. But this is how that, that those gases get in and out of the cell. We also have um, some water vapor that is lost through these. So this is a little concerning for some plants if you're in a little drier environment. Um, so that's why they control how they open and close because that's actually really important in maintaining water in the plant if it's in an environment that's a little bit drier. Um, so. When we talk about photosynthesis, just a couple of words that are important, some vocabulary. Autotrophs are organisms that make their own food. They automatically make their own food. That's how I remember autotrophs make their own food. Um, heterotrophs, organisms that cannot make their own food, so that instead they have to eat other things that can harvest energy from the sun and make their own food. So I guess we would fall into that category because, like I said, it doesn't matter how long I stand outside, as much as I love the sunshine, I am never going to make my own food. So that really concludes our overview of photosynthesis, our overview of how energy is harvested from the sun, gets stored as a, or gets converted into a food source and some of it is stored, and plants are gonna metabolize some of that, when we eat plants, we're going to metabolize that. When we eat animals that eat plants, we metabolize that. So it's very far reaching in, in biological systems. Photosynthesis really is that ultimate source of, of energy from the sun that provides energy and food for almost every single thing on this planet. So it's that important. Hopefully you feel confident that you can explain how 
plants um, do that conversion, at least the overview, and identify those reactants and products.